I think it's fair to say the media is still swooning over Kamala Harris and now Tim Walls as well. I'm reminded of the fact that Kamala did her training for the job under President Joe Biden. Now, it was way back in 1987 when candidate Joe Biden read speeches that he had plagiarized from a British politician. He got caught and he had to drop out. Now his vice president is practically hypnotized by the teleprompter, reading the same sentences in location after location, word for word. It's not plagiarized, but it's not even close to the way that she sounds when she's talking without a script. Her campaign managers have kept her on a pretty tight leash, and they've clearly bought into something that Biden's speechwriter said. Quote, there are three things that history tells us a president must have. They must have a sense of proportion, a sense of humility, and a sense of dignity. But joining us tonight is TBN political contributor and former senator and ambassador to New Zealand, Scott Brown. So, Ambassador, we're at a point where political professionals can remake a candidate. In the case of Kamala Harris, they're basically keeping her from saying anything that they didn't hand her to say. How long does this go on, and can she take it all the way to November without ever having to interact with the media? Well, you, see, you remember Hayden Biden, and uh, now you have Kamala, basically, who's uh, not doing even as many as President Biden did. Uh, I, I love the fact when she was asked, she came off the tarmac and she took a tough question. Uh, Vice President, when are you going to debate? When are you going to give us an interview? Well, you know, I talked to my team and you know, by the end of the month, that's 22 days at that point away. Of course, then by then they'll give her all the all the questions. They'll they'll prep her and prep her and prep her. So she'll come out silent like she's a brain surgeon. And there was only one of them, Dr. Ben Carson, as you know, and he, he actually knew what he was talking about. Uh, listen, she'll keep it up as long as the media, the mainstream media let her and shame on them. I'm just so disappointed that people don't hold her feet to the fire. This The American people deserve better than this. You know, I have to say, I agree with you 100 percent. From a political standpoint, it makes real sense. I don't blame her because if the media is not going to force her to uh, interact with them, if they're not going to demand that she do interviews, uh, this is a great strategy. She's basically going to the ring with her opponent sitting in the corner uh, with the bell not having been rung yet. And she gets to walk around and wave her gloves like she's a real prize fighter. And she's never landed nor has she taken a punch. So just from a political standpoint, I totally understand. If you take her off script, she's a mess. Uh, but I'm not sure how long this can last, except that the press seems to be willing to let it last as long as possible, because this shows just how much in the tank they are for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Let me get your take on Tim Walls. It hasn't been the smoothest rollout. His military record uh, is one of deception. I think we honor his service. I don't want to take anything away from the fact that he did serve, but I can't let him get away with pretending that he was in a war when he never was. Yeah, listen, uh, Governor, uh, I commend anybody who serves a day. I did 39 years in the National Guard. Uh, you know, I enjoy every every day. I reflect back on the, the amazing men and women I served with. And one of the things you don't do, especially being a former sitting U.S. senator, they went through my record with a fine tooth comb and you don't misrepresent anything like that. Now, here's the situation with him. He was uh, apparently a command sergeant major. Well, no, he wasn't because he didn't complete the course. And then you knew or should have known, you know, a couple of years out because there's a rotation that actually happens. He knew that his unit was coming up. Uh, to be activated at some point in time. And then he absolutely knew and he decided to step down and he did not carry a weapon in a war zone. Uh, but apparently Kamala squared away. She said, oh, he misspoke. Well, he, he misspoke for what, eight years, six years? Right? Come on. He, he lied and he got caught. And it's up to the American people to hold his feet to the fire. Now, a little bit different than J.D. Vance that he joined and he served. And, uh, you know, God bless him. Uh, active duty, you know, did his time and self-made person. And, yeah, Waltz is going to have to answer. But once again, you need people to hold their feet to the fire. And who is that exactly? Yeah, it's you and me and everybody else. But it's got to be the voters. You've got to be your listeners and viewers uh, who need to hold their feet to the fire and get out to the polls and show them that they don't agree with this sort of thing. 
the latest polls have shown this race has really tightened up. In fact, there were some that have come out this week that even indicate that Kamala Harris has taken the lead in several of the key swing states, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, some others. How dangerous is this for Donald Trump? Does he need to refocus his message, not so much on the personalities or even the people of Kamala Harris and Tim Walz, but rather just remind people that it's about policies, not personalities? Well, I expected a bump. Uh, you know, the, the money that's coming in the crowds, she's the new flavor of the day. And that, that's fine. But the election is not tomorrow and it's not over till it's over. Uh, you know, yes, I believe you're absolutely right. We've discussed this before. If President Trump just talks about what it was like when he was in office, we had inflation was down, the border was getting secured. We were getting out of all of our conflicts and wars. There was there was peace in the Middle East. Uh, you know, the, the, we had uh, obviously the uh, the illegals weren't coming in in droves and droves and droves, draining our resources. Uh, mortgage rates were low. Gas prices are low. Food prices are low. Just talk about that. Show that comparison. That's all he needs to talk about. Keep hammering it away. You know, for example, you know, you're, you know, you're a convicted felon. You know, when she starts with that stuff. Yeah, listen. Uh, yes, that's true. I didn't agree with it. I have attorneys. Uh, they're going to handle it. We're going to reverse it on appeal. But let me tell you about your record, Madam Vice President. You know, under your administration, we screwed up of Afghanistan. Uh, mortgage rates are high. Inflation is high. Energy prices are high. Illegals are pouring in. We're, bl we're blowing through our resources. That's all you need to do. And he needs to smile a little bit more and be a little bit more pleasant and stop, you know, attacking personally. It doesn't matter. Everyone knows who she is. I think that's a great point. I hope he'll take your advice on that. He was very disciplined in that June debate with Joe Biden. He did not uh, exploit what could have been an easy opportunity for him to take some shots at Joe. He basically let Joe Biden talk. And the more Joe Biden talked, the worse it got for him. And, and somehow Donald Trump seemed to clearly understand, never interrupt your enemy when he's in the process of destroying himself. Uh, yeah. Let's hope he can take your advice and follow his own uh, sort of wise counsel from June and do that again when they debate in September. Uh, right. Where are the vulnerabilities that maybe Donald Trump does need to exploit? You mentioned immigration, inflation. How does he get that message across and remind people that Bidenomics is really the economic policy of Kamala Harris. The only thing is she might be even more left of that than Joe Biden was. Well, listen, I, I, I think she so far left that it makes Bernie Sanders look like Russia Limbaugh because uh, <laughs> we know she's a San Francisco liberal. She's a Ca California liberal. You look at her record, not only on when she was a, uh, obviously a prosecutor, but obviously, you know, what, in, in the United States Senate. It, it, it's just it speaks for itself. And here's the thing that that obviously is gone. Where are the pictures of President Trump online when he got up and shook his fist? You know, fight, fight, fight. Where are those? They're gone, obviously. So, you know, what's happening there. And then, you know, you look at what's happening with, with Kamala. Uh, she knew of Joe Biden's deterioration and, and she hit it. I haven't heard anything about that. I think that's the number one issue. So everything that people are talking about is Joe still the president, by the way? Because she's flying around like she's in charge. I listened to her the other day. Uh, yesterday, she says, yeah, I'm working on it 24 hours a day. No, she's not. She's doing fundraising. She's doing campaign stops. She's not working. She doesn't have answers. She's hiding from debates. And the American people need to understand that they need to tell their friends to put, put, put pin her down, ask her questions. You know, see who we're going to get because we can't go four more years like this. You know, the economy is uncertain. You never know whether your money's worth as much today as it was yesterday. It's one of the reasons I buy gold from American Hartford Gold. American Hartford Gold has earned a five-star rating and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Be sure to tell them Mike Huckabee sent you. They'll give you up to $15,000 of free silver on your first qualifying order. Call 844-417-1010. Or text Mike to 998899. You'll be glad you did business with American Hartford Gold.